Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is abundance teacher and money coach, Jody Lynn Craven. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Jody Lynn, I, I don't know if you knew this, but David was a co-host here on the show for about half a year. I didn't and know that. Yeah, yeah. He was on here for half a year. And, and we had a half a year of the stream of David and David himself and some really, really cool That's times. Cool. And then he's been doing, you know, reprises ever since then, coming back to do visits and, and sharing stuff yeah. and so forth. But for me, it, it feels like old times because not only do I have my present co-host, Jody Lynn Craven, but I also have past co-host, David Strickle, all on the stage at the same time. This is fun. Yeah. I love this. Always, Always fun being here. Yeah, well, that's great. And and David, we got to congratulate you. I mean, you how many times did you come on to the show and say, I almost have the book ready. We, we just have to do some <laughs> fixes to it. <laughs> we, we just, just need to rewrite it for the third or fourth time, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> which we did. And I'm very, very happy with the outcome. And we've got really good early feedback. Uh, on the, we published on December 1st officially. Woohoo! Uh, really, really good feedback. Uh, so the, all the time that went into it was worth the, worth the wait, I believe. And congratulations to Kat, too, because Kat did a fabulous job as a coach. Oh, she did. I mean, just, I mean, just really, really, really good. Yeah, and Kat. this time, in the first book, she was the editor. In this book, she's a co-author because she's mm -hmm. asking questions of the stream. She did a lot of editing. I need a, I'm dyslexic, so I need a lot of editing. So she did all the <laughs> editing. So, um, you know, she and she knows how to edit without taking uh, the stream, especially when, when I'm channeling. Mm -hmm. She doesn't change what's offered, but she just cleans up my, you know, right. Especially when I'm channeling and typing. Oh gosh, it's really crazy. Well, she makes <laughs> you look good. That's what you, that's that's what the she author, the, the ghost does. author's job. Is. Well, she's not more than a ghost author because she's a co-author, but that's co what the co-author's job is. Yeah, yep. and she is a co um, co-founder of our publishing brand, Streaming Words Publishing. Ooh. Very cool. We're in business together now, and we we will be publishing other Taya centric, stream centric. Uh, books and kind of start a brand, kind of like a Hay House type, Ooh. you know, brand of our own. Do our own thing. Really, really good. Yeah. 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 She has a lot of publishing good. experience, so why not tap into that and harness Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely knows her stuff too. And yeah. and she knows marketing too. So you got the whole package right there. Indeed. So that's really, really good. Yeah. So, all right. I know that we've talked about it in the past. We've certainly talked about the Taya and the Taya practice and so forth in the past, but now we got the book called The Taya Practice. So give people like a, a brief introduction. Let's assume that that there are people, because there probably are, people who are listening who have not actually heard much about Taya. They need to know something about it. And of course, that's what the book is all about. So give, give people a little intro on the book. Certainly. Well, The Taya Practice is something that I created for myself. Uh, I have understood Law of Attraction my whole life. I understood it when I was a child that even though I was growing up poor and in, in really kind of dire conditions sometimes that I could actually make things happen. And so I used that and misused that at times <laughs> uh, and, and uh, kind of went through a whole progression with my journey with law of attraction and attracting abundance and, and really uh, focused on material wealth and abundance as, as everybody that knows me knows uh, for the first 20 years or so of my adult life and then got to a place where I realized that, okay, this stuff is great, but it's not everything. I need to be happy. I need to love myself. I need to experience joy. You know, I'm still not mastering my emotions and all of this stuff. So how do I do that? And so I rent, uh, went even more inward, uh, for clarity around that because there's so much information out there that it just gets really confusing when there's lots of different ideas and things like that. I sort of shut down and think, okay, this, they can't all be right. What is this? And that's when I really went into the study of belief systems. And I realized that, gosh, all belief systems are our own creation from our ego consciousness, right. source of source, sources of appreciation of all that is, and that's it. So how do we operate as a human being in a belief system? Why can't I just create a belief system that strips away all of the religious and ego created stuff and really align a belief system with universal law? And what is that? So that's where Taya came from. And Taya stands for trust your abundance because what it really boiled down to, if you want to take something down to one word in the English language, I discovered that the most important thing was trust. Learning to let go of your ego and fear and all of the twists and turns that you manifest for yourself through vibrational flow, which we talk about all the time, and return to trusting your abundance. And it shows up when you do. And I prove that Every day in my own life, I share it when I don't trust because we're all mercurial beings. We you know, fall out of trust sometimes. 
Uh, and then I share what happens when I return to trust and what happened, you know, and, and the journey there. And so Taya is all about living a life that's aligned with source consciousness, but not all the time and living a life that's aligned with universal law, which includes the law of attraction and the law of polarity. I have discovered that really everything really boils down to those two things that yes, we create everything via our consciousness, but our consciousness is not static because we're in a polarized environment, meaning it's, we're going up and down a vibrational spiral all the time. How do we get better and better and better as we move through life at managing that? And that's what Ty is all about, which is great. And I guess I should flash the book if we're going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm still learning go. my finger placement. Like, where do I put my fingers not to cover up all the words? But <laughs> this is the cover of the book. I really I love the cover. And it's not a pamphlet. I keep telling everybody this isn't some pamphlet that's trying to get you to take some program. This is the whole shebang. It's, it, it's a book. That's it's a thick book. all of it. It's a heavy, thick, yeah. big 475 page read. But it's a, it's a living workbook. I call it the tie a Bible playfully, but there's no rules or judgment or deities or worship or anything like that or dogma. Uh, it's just universal law and how to, how to apply it in your life. I there love you that. Go. Yeah. By the way, one of the things that I really love that you and Kat did in the book um, is you put that glossary of terms right near the beginning. I mean, um, it, like years ago, I was taught that that's called part of the MOTO, M-O-T-O, which stands for method of the organization. It, and it includes the terminology within an organization because every term, every organization has its own way of expressing things, of talking about things. And Taya exactly has that. I mean, it has its own phrases, up the spiral, down the spiral, all this other stuff that if you aren't part of it from the beginning, you don't know what it means. You can I feel alienated. Yeah, like what is you this can. guy talking about? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a full glossary at the back, but the front of the book, we loaded up the things that right away when you're starting to, I didn't want people to have to stop reading and go to the back, like what the figure hell out what it was. Today? Yeah. I have to push on the, you know, the, to get the definition and all that sort of thing. I didn't want anyone to have to do that. So yeah, I, we, brilliant. the terms we use throughout the book are right up front. So you can right. kind of start learning them. Yeah. And once you yeah, learn them, I mean, they're actually easy. They're, they're not difficult to understand. You just have to know what they mean. And once you do understand what they mean, it, they are great shortcuts because each one of those terms is a shortcut to a, a larger concept. And, and when you have it boiled down to a, a little shortcut like that, you can kind of zip through pretty quickly. Here's what it's all about. And it makes sense quickly rather than having to just explain in detail. Okay, this means this, which does, which has that effect. But it, it, it can kind of get cumbersome after a while without that terminology. So the terminology yeah. well, actually The does use sell. of fancy flowery words uh, and otherworldly type sounding, it's sexy. I get it. Mm -hmm. But if you're confusing the reader, you're really not serving them. Exactly. I want to serve exactly. the reader. I want to teach teach the reader if they're interested. This is how you systematically raise your vibration and live a better life. Period. However, and let's get there the easiest way we possibly can. And if you need it to be sexier, and you know, have these, you know, you know, need a lot of science first of all, or if you need a lot of ethereal type things, uh, you can do that. But that's not really what we're about. And and the science of it is here's a little tidbit. Go apply it in your life and see what happens, and come back for more. Mm -hmm. Do your own experimentation with this stuff. Yeah, that's Prove always it to important. yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you're the one who who's going to be the hardest sell. You're sure. Gonna be, you're you're going to be your own hardest sell on anything that you're absorbing. So yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Try, try it. Test it. Apply uh, apply the scientific method. Um, oh, now I, I haven't actually finished the whole book yet. I've gotten partway through it, but I'm curious. I, I get the feeling that there's there's a significant amount that tracks with the boot camp, which and I don't even know what you call the boot camp anymore. I know you changed the name of it. Oh, we we try we started to call it something else, the tie experience. I'm like, you know, let's just call it boot camp. That's it's what still it boot camp. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's meant to kick your ass and it will. So why not call it boot camp? <laughs> yeah, well, and it does. It really does. You, I mean, talk about you know coming face to face with your own demons. It happens really fast. In module one, it happened for me. Like, okay, yeah, now I know I'm in the real deal. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it, it it does have a, a fabulous track to it. But how closely or how far apart does the book track from the from the boot camp? Well, it's not a, it's not identical to boot camp, but we wrote the book based on what we learned teaching it in boot camp. And okay. so there's nothing you don't get you get to the end and certainly if you want to, you know, take boot camp or buy a guided meditation or do more stuff, that, you know, that's back there. But this isn't a, you're going to read the book and then you have to take boot camp to get it. Okay. I know a lot of things are designed that way in our world, oh, yeah. but oh, I, yeah. uh, you know, I say bullshit makes the world go round, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't want to be that. I wanted to authentically deliver. That's why I call it the Taya Bible, because I wanted to authentically deliver the Taya practice to someone. You can buy the book, you can read it, use it as a living workbook. 
never spend another dime on anything with us and you will mm -hmm. get it. That was good. my intention with this. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's important. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. Cause that's not often that, you know, that we see that in our world today. It's more like the opposite, like you were expressing. Buy this yeah, and then just buy that. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Well, we're all taught, if you've ever taken a class, a course on how to create a business around this stuff, mm -hmm. that's what you're taught. I did. I, I, took, mm -hmm. I took a course and I took the things that I wanted to utilize that were in alignment with what I was actually teaching mm -hmm. and kept those things. And I stripped away everything else. I was taught you've got to agitate people. You know, you've got to get them feeling their pain and then you got to go in for the kill and then you got to oh, get yeah. them to do your next, thing, your next thing and your next thing. And, and I toyed with, right yeah, and I did all of that stuff and I'm like, but this isn't in alignment with what I'm teaching. So mm -hmm. how do I, how do I say that, you know, abundance is assured if you just release these things? Oh, it's only going to be assured if you continue to spend more money with us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that doesn't work. And what I proved to myself miraculously <laughs> practicing what I teach that my personal well-being and, and financial abundance in my lifestyle, whether my business is rocking like it did during the pandemic or whether it completely implodes like it did in 2021, my life's fine. I do practice what I teach. So I'm not desperate to get people into a program or anything like that, because I know that if the money's not flowing from one direction, it's going to flow from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's do you also the, find, do you also right. find David that, that the like, clientele. I don't, I don't know if we want to call the people who, who take your material or, or, you know, purchase your material, but because you have that philosophy of, I'm going to give you all of these things and not, you know, shackle you to buying this and this and this and this, that you've created a more clientele anyway, who come back anyway, because they just love oh, sure. The, sure. There are plenty of people that do that anyway, that I don't have to push that. And I've gone through bringing in marketing people that wanted to push it and did mm -hmm. and saw what that did. And, and you know, I lost, you know, some credibility and followers. That was just part of my process of learning mm -hmm. and it never felt right. And it was out of desperation. And then when I let go of the desperation, the people that really loved what we do, they, they hung around through it. And I appreciate that. Uh, and then new people showed up. And then, like I said, when, when the money stopped flowing in the, the stream business, it picked up elsewhere and my life never missed a beat. I'm like, wow, I really am trusting my abundance and it really is continuing to show up no matter what. So my mission is to share this practice with the world and not attach commerce to it at all. You know, yes, there's a price to, you know, publish a book and, and do all that sort of, of course there is, but not attach it to, I need to have this as my income. Because that's the kiss of death in something like this, as far as I'm concerned. Because then it does become something that people just inherently have that weird vibe about. I can't trust this. I don't know. And if they don't give themselves fully to it as a belief system, it's not going to work the same. That's why belief systems work so well. The devout believers of any belief system, whether it's a religion or whatever, yes, they're getting the benefit from it because they're they're trusting. No matter what the the path is to that trust, they're trusting. And by the way, in answer to the other part of your question, Jody Lynn, um, the Taya community is a really tight community, very active. A lot of people who are just continuously involved. I mean, I, I'm part of it. I, I, I sit more on the periphery. I kind of watch more than anything else. I'm not much of a participant anymore. I just kind of pay attention to what goes on. But I mean, there are people who are just like, they're, they're my God, if, if, if it was somebody who was really negative about Taya, they'd be saying that it was a cult because it's just so fanatical. Oh, sure. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, we had our, our live uh, event in L.A. last year. Uh, I had a picture of five of us that had Taya, you know, can you see it? <laughs> Taya tattoos. Oh, yeah, Taya tattoos. And my we, partner, we Michael, who's not, who's not a devout Taya, and I'm glad that he's not, but he's not, you know, is, is into it. He says, you're running a cult. You've got all these people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's trust your abundance. The tattoo is about the mindset and the trust and the reminder, you know, and the honoring the practice. It's not about me at all. But mm -hmm. I, I love that we were all there together and said, wow, there's five of us here with tattoos. Let's take this. I have to find that picture somewhere. It's really cool. <laughs> that yeah. is cool. You're not required to tattoo your body to be a tie. <laughs> 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 well, that's really what the difference is. I mean, a cult, they, they do all kinds of ways to kind of course you into continuing to do it. You, you don't need that with Taya followers. Yeah. That, well, I'm, I was watching that Netflix. Uh, there's a Netflix on some sort of a, a twin, twin flames. Plane. Yeah. I didn't finish it, but I started it. I'm like, God, I hope nobody ever looks at Taya and thinks. But really, the difference is that 
and uh, Katarina has been involved in a cult. So she, she's been That's on the right. podcast. I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Okay. She's had the most interesting life and she's, you know, God, she has an incredible 15 life, years like younger than me and she's geez. had the most interesting life, but she's been in a cult or involved in a cult, I should say. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a lot of things opposite of a cult. We are not, we're, we're teaching you to appreciate your transgressors mm -hmm. and to, you know, build relationships with, with people that don't believe the way that you do. Because you, we don't need people to to support our belief system, mm -hmm. right. and we don't need that dogma. We don't need to say this is the only way because it's not. Anything it's too based on, system. yeah. Sorry, what you ahead. just sorry, what you just said about the book where you're giving all of the details, um, those cult like things or cults. You're always looking to the person that's above you to tell you what to do and how to act and that you're mm. doing the right thing. Like you, it sounds like with your book, and I'm excited to read it um, to confirm this, but I believe it to be true that you're giving all of the details saying, here, you can do it for yourself. Here's mm -hmm. exactly what I do. Yeah, we're, we're making ourselves obsolete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happened. We've had lots of people come through boot camp that I don't hear from for years. They, 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 they take it, they go live their lives and I'll reconnect at some point, just check in with them. Oh, life's going great. I practice this every day. Mm -hmm. uh, my very first uh, enrollee in boot camp from 2018, I didn't see or hear from her for a couple of years. And I was really concerned that we had just lost touch. And then she showed up to the event in LA. Oh my God, it's changed my life. I'm so grateful to you. And you know, of course I'm bawling at that point of hearing that, but you know, she, you don't need to continue to follow the guru if the material is authentic. You, it should be something that you go and apply in your life. And then, yes, it's helpful to have a community and other people that understand how we operate because most other people on the planet don't operate this way. So it's good to sort of have a base to go back to, but it's not to go be sequestered with a bunch of tieists and only do that. It really is go out and play in the world and, and experience any and everything you want to experience with these tools. Not that the Tyus, I love the term, by the way, Tyus, that's a good term, <laughs> but it's not like the Tyus don't spend a lot of time reinforcing each other because they do. I mean, that's sure. also part of it. And I, I think depending on who we are, some of us need that more than others. I love the Taya community. When I, I live in a very social uh, resort, you know, area in Southern California. And when I socialized more, I found myself, you know, not, I want to talk about this stuff with you guys, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, vacations and cocktail parties. And, you know, did you get a new house or a new car or whatever? You know, that that's good for a few minutes for me. And then I really want to talk about the good juicy stuff in life. Mm -hmm. And I know yeah. I have to shut that down to function, you know, with people that aren't into this sort of thing, or they just think you're insane, but I love to geek out on this stuff. And that's I, so I, funny. I, love <laughs> I just, I just turned down a vacation that was like, really a, a really smoking good deal but the thought of having a bunch of the conversations that you were describing that surface level conversations where i can't really be myself or my full <laughs> self because they're just not into the same things and, and that's okay that's where they're at i i said no no i can't do that i can't my face can't pretend very well so it's not gonna You're not go a poker well. player now i'm not no, no. Yeah. I'm really bad. <laughs> well, good. You know yourself. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Well, and people that are really open minded about things, uh, you know, these days we see hyper polarity, especially around politics. Mm -hmm. And if they want to draw you into that discussion and you don't immediately take their side, then there, there's an issue. And, you know, when you tell so, my, my standard answer is I don't give politics that much power in my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 they'll start a fight right there <laughs> yes people get so upset by that well how can you not you're part of the problem and like oh yeah no i don't believe that but you go you go ahead with your beliefs it's fine <laughs> mm -hmm. keep creating that yeah <laughs> uh, we, yeah it's, it's very entertaining to watch the results so yeah go ahead and create it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah i actually had a conversation with somebody a friend uh, i'm in, i'm very much involved in the dance community here in connecticut and uh a woman I met in the dance community, I actually asked her out for a, a coffee so we could get to know each other better. And we had a really interesting experience because it turns out she's also very spiritual. And I never knew that about her. And I, I say that because to me, it's an example of what kind of happens in the other direction. When you reach out and you start interacting with, like you were describing, the community at large, regardless of their belief system, I'm finding more and more people are appearing, kind of coming out of the woodwork. 
Do, well, do you're, whole, you're also, people. you know, you're, you've really gone deep into this. So that's your vibe and you know, you're attractive. Well, sure. Them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I think about our, our house and I'll get into that in a minute. Our, you know, our home burned down last December. Right. We're finally starting to build it back now. Hooray. You know, okay, good. We finally good. got our permit. It almost took a year, but it's funny Yay. when the uh, book came out, I started thinking about all the people that wanted copies of the book. And I realized that the contractor, our interior designers, and there was somebody, some third person all are into this stuff. Yes. They all listen to my podcast now. I'm like, how did we attract that? You know, we hired them all separately <laughs> and just found out later that they're all, oh, I love Abraham and I love Hay House. And I, you know, oh, I didn't know. And now they listen to the podcast. They all wanted the copies of the book. And it is interesting that we've assembled all these people, you know, rebuilding our home that are all into this stuff. Because I'm yeah. sure a lot of I, I, people in that industry are not. So. And, and even more than that, I'm also finding now this is also going to be law of attraction, but I'm also finding that I'm encountering a lot of people who don't necessarily know this stuff. But the really odd part is I get into conversation and I learn that they're doing the work anyway, even though they don't realize they're doing the work. Mm -hmm. My mind is still blown by that. But I think I, I think it's kind of like a description of what's going on <laughs> on a global basis. This 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 kind of stuff is kind of infiltrating everybody, perhaps on a subconscious level, and they're starting to basically raise their own vibrations without realizing what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, I, I think it, it, we we we're led there naturally, whether you know the labels and the terminology or not. I always joke when I was fourteen, I thought I invented law of attraction. I love that too. I had no <laughs> idea what it was called, but I remember thinking, "God, I've got this cool thing." I told my brother about. It. I got this cool thing that if I start dreaming of stuff, it just shows up. You know, we were really poor, so it was you know clothes and spending money and stuff like that. But something always was showing up for me, and then I just kept going with it and going with it and going with it. Which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, well, when you, it's even you've got no other alternative. You know? Well, yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. When you're, you're all the way at the bottom, zero. you've got nowhere to yeah. go but up. But a lot of people don't find their way out of that, unfortunately. That's true. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that, again, I think that's something that we're going to start seeing change on pretty quickly because I'm seeing it throughout all strata of society. I mean, people from all walks of life, people I just encounter, you know, kind of randomly. They're, they're, I get into a conversation. They're talking about how uh, you know they're they're into yoga and they've been doing a meditation practice. And the meditation has led them to other stuff. I'm saying, like, do you know this stuff? They said, what are you talking about? I've never heard of any of that. Yeah, and you don't even live in Southern California. <laughs> no, I know that. I'm, I'm on the other coast entirely. I know. I mean, it's everywhere where I live, of course. But yeah, that's that's really cool. But you know, the stream has said many many times that the vibration of earth is shifting and shifting more significantly than it has in the past because of our right. ability to communicate and new, uh, you know, new beings enter the inner physical up to speed with the vibration they're entering in. Right. So that's why we see a younger generation coming of age now that is more open-minded and not polarized about things than we've ever seen before. And, and that's why, you know, those of us that are older, Thank gosh, you know, I couldn't imagine hearing about somebody not being a gender in, in high school, you know, right, right. and now, you know, there's just all kinds of ideas and things that are, that are really, um, challenging the matrix that yeah. I know you're telling me I'm supposed to be this, but I'm not going to be that. And we also see more people born with quote unquote disabilities that aren't really disabilities. They're just variants uh, of people that are coming to, to purposely disconnect from that matrix and maybe they're labeled with you know some syndrome or, or something that's considered a disability but really they're just choosing to experience physical in a in a way that's not going to place them in the matrix because yeah. they're just out of it or they're choosing to redefine what the matrix means for themselves in a way that it becomes a lot less impactful i, th I think of my friend joel elston uh who he, he basically describes his adhd as his superpower he has completely yeah. flipped the concept around. He doesn't think about it as being a, a negative at all. He thinks of it as like, wow, this is like the best thing that could have happened to me. So I say that about point. dyslexia and, and my parents, you know, not really being active in my life and being poor. All those things were the best thing that happened to me. Being gay, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. made me question everything. I was, I grew sure. up at a, a religion that said who I was was wrong. And so I had to in turn question the religion. Mm. And right. my dyslexia, I didn't fit into school. So I had to educate myself in other ways. Mm -hmm. And all of those things, gosh, they're all gifts. And I think we, we all have these gifts. And you know, do we acknowledge them as gifts or not? That's the difference. 
and, and I have to admit, there's a little piece of me that imagines David Strickle in school. And, and you described to us how you learn pretty early that you could attract things into your life. So starting at ground zero, you're, you're attracting these things in your life. Your friends are seeing that. And they see this guy who has this dyslexia and he and, and nothing seems to fit. And yet he's getting all this stuff coming to his life. They're saying, what is he doing? Stealing it? <laughs> oh, sure. I don't know what their I don't know what their conclusion was, but their 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 whole brain Well, I drove the teachers crazy off. because my older brother, I lived in a small town and my older brother was a straight A student and I was not. And, you know, I was, you know, I always did well on standardized tests, but then I didn't do well in school. I was too, I was daydreaming all the time. Okay. And my mind was w with the stream more often than not. And I just knew that I would be okay whether I, whether I had an education or not, right, a formal right, education okay. or not. But I'm and thinking how, how others that, saw that true. though. People that you knew, people, your peers in, in school and so forth, because they, they probably looked at you as kids like, huh, how is that working? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they did. I, I I remember most kids just thought I was a rich kid, except I lived in a two bedroom <laughs> apartment, you know, on the wrong side of the tracks. But I drove a nice car, and I had, I, I you know, as, as a teenager, I manifested all the stuff that you want as a teenager. I had a brand new yeah. car, and nice clothes, and a nice watch, and you know, I always had money to, almost always had money to do all the things that I wanted to do. So it was interesting, but there were times that that stuff went away too. And, you know, that sure. was, an, that's in the first book, you know, it was an interesting journey when I would manifest and demanifest and then manifest it all over again. It took me a few years to really, really trust. Like, wow, well, I've done it there business. and I did it here, but then it went away. So what's, what's that curiosity is what really drove me to create all that. So, so let's talk about trust. I mean, trust, like you said, is at the core of Trust Your Abundance, Taya. It's at the core of what you were learning. Um, so let, let's just you know, share some concepts here. Like what, why, why do you find trust to be so important? And, and give us some stories to illustrate it. Sure. Well, you know, I talk about duality all the time and that we, we are operating in this duality that I identify as one part source and one part ego, human consciousness, but we're all beings of source. So we all channel in our own way. And when we're at our best, we're channeling source. That's cr our creativity, uh, our solving of things, our expansion of consciousness is all source. And then ego is about desires and about fear and judgment and all of those things that we pick up in the matrix, our, our human experience. <clears throat> and we're sort of always doing this, this balancing act of, allowing more source, meaning we're detuning our ego and letting more source in, or we're doing the opposite. We're really letting the ego run wild. We're really playing in the matrix deeply and we're sort of overshadowing our, our source consciousness. And the, the difference is, is that when you're operating an ego and disallowing source, you're recycling. You're not creating anything new, but that's not necessarily a bad thing or something that we're looking to totally eradicate. Because when you allow your, your source to go down and your ego to go up, I forget which hand I was using for what. Uh, <laughs> dyslexia has um, kicked in again. There we go. <laughs> it definitely does all the time. But when you allow more ego, thus overshadowing source, you're manifesting obstacles for yourself. And just like we were talking about all those gifts that we create, you know, we create gifts in our spin out. Uh, gosh, what a major gift the house burning down has been just mm -hmm. in learning and experiencing and, and, and experiencing a need to further um, allow patience in my life and things like that. You know, I look at all the gifts that have come from that experience. So we do, we, we go down our spiral vibrationally, we manifest obstacles. And then as soon as we go up our spiral, we solve the obstacles. Sometimes we spend a lifetime though, never going up our spiral and judging the obstacle and being in that victim space. And that is something that I see you know, we talk about the younger generation that really wants to be outside the matrix. Something I do notice, though, is that they're outside the matrix. They're wanting to cut their own path. They don't want to be in corporate life. They don't want to necessarily have a formal education and be in debt forever for it. They don't want to, you know, be a gender or, or a, you know, a sexual identity the, the way that they've been taught. But then they sort of turn back around in the lower vibration and create all of these identities. And then they're victimized by it. Mm. You know, there's a lot of that, you know, how dare you gender me? How dare you do this? And well, why do you care is what I say, yeah. you know, go be your thing and, 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 and be confident in that and love yourself and just be who you are. And don't let that fear creep in, you know, hearing the governor of Florida saying that Florida's where woke goes to die. And, and yes, I can see how that would inspire fear. 
I, I was talking to somebody the other night whose sister is a teacher in Florida and she quit. She quit teaching. Brilliant teacher. Mm, and she wow. quit teaching. She says she just can't take it anymore. All these you know crazy rules in the public school system. But, you know, that's the reality that's being experienced. And if you are going to uh, play outside the matrix, which is great, and then you allow fear to creep in and draw, that's going to draw you right back into the matrix. Yeah. So I know I've gone way off on a tangent as I always do, but you know, that returning to trust, oh, wait a minute. I know there's things out there that are designed to draw me back into the matrix. My government saying that who I am is wrong and is going to be outlawed in school, you know, the, the certain expressions and things like that. And, and it draws you back in until you learn. And it's a personal journey to learn that, oh, wait a minute, if I always trust, I'm always going to be okay. You know, and I'm in my fifties now. So I've learned, I've been through enough of these, you know, doomsday scenarios where I learned that if I choose not to give it power, it's not going to impact my life. I've been through recessions and wars and, you know, I was a draft age in the, uh, the first, um, was it Persian Gulf? What was the first one in the early nineties? You know, I was, I was prime draft material. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. in college. I was in my early twenties. Uh, the, the whole thing in Kuwait, I forget the name of it. Desert storm. There's a storm. Yeah, that's it. And I just made peace with, hey, you know, whatever unfolds here is what unfolds for me. And if I, you know, if we go to war and there becomes a draft and that's what happens, then that's what my experience is going to be. I'm not going to be fearful about this. Uh, and then with certain, you know, presidents winning elections that weren't necessarily who I voted for and, and seeing people around me really freak out and just deciding, hey, I'm not going to give this power. I'm not giving this person any power. Then the big recession of 2008, I'm not giving that power. And never was I having a, a negative experience as a result of those things because I chose not to give them power. One of the most interesting aspects of my own experience with uh, Ty, and by the way, I don't think you did go off on a tangent because this all was about trust. I asked about trust and you showed, you, you did the right thing. You showed us what trust is, but you also showed us what the other side, of the, the not trusting side is. So it's all part of the same soup in that sense but in my own experience of of dealing with my own up the spiral down the spiral moments um i, I continue to be amazed how many different ways i'm able to go down the spiral i mean that I, I really can see it now in a way that i never saw before also because of what i learned in the boot camp i also don't I, I don't actually go down the spiral in the same sense. Does that make sense? I mean, I, yeah, I do go down, but well, it's, it's different. not like you're aware of what it's all about now. Yeah. So even when you're yeah. down there, you're like, I'm just down the spiral. Yeah. I'll be back up tomorrow or as soon as I decide. The thing now is I'll, I'll be back up as soon as I decide to be back up and it can be instant. Yeah. And it can yeah. be. And it can I, I think be. What, I just what I'm trying to stress, out, is, um, what, what I'm trying to stress is that it's just kind of like a, a an experience of, oh, I'm down the spiral again. Well, this is yucky. You know, it, it's not, oh, I'm down the spiral. I can't, I can't believe get up this is and I'm, happening. I'm miscreating, you know, as I, I remember that term, miss, I'm miscreating down here, down my spiral. Right, and low right. vibration. It's so terrible yeah. that I'm down here. Well, no, it's not. It's an experience that you're creating for yourself. And you've created that experience to provide a platform to create something new, which is your expansion of consciousness, which in my belief system is why we come to physical in the first place. That's what the stream says. You come to physical for the expansion of consciousness, not to live a life of perfection. There is no expansion of consciousness in an easy life of perfection. So why do you even want that? It's okay to want improvement. We all want to be comfortable and, and experience new things. And, you know, that desire drives us, right? But that's still ego. That's a good part of it. The good part of our ego, in my opinion, is that that part that drives us. Sure. And then the, the part that's more challenging is the part that still has that I call it vibrational dust. No matter how much detuning you do, you have vibrational dust. But that's where I really geek out is what, what what's in the vibrational basement? What's lurking down there that I'm not aware of that's dragging my vibe down all the time that I get to experience and detune and then never experience again if I detune it? Yeah, that's the key. If you If you detune it, you don't have to experience it. And which really coincides with something I, I see a lot here on the show. Uh, we have guests who come through all the time. We have co-hosts as well who do similar kinds of things, but they, um, you know, they they go through what's commonly known as the dark night of the soul. Sometimes there's two or three of them. And then they come out the other side and they've got some tools that help them get out the other side. They get so excited and so they want to share the tools with the world. They become coaches and authors and course givers and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's great. It's wonderful. You, 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 you see that whole pattern play out. You say, that's really, really cool. But what's also fascinating about it is two things. First, they're, they're, yeah, they're two really, really, really fascinating things. The first is they all to a person say, 
I am so appreciative of what I went through. I never want to do it again, but I learned from that, that more than anything else I've ever learned from in my life. So that's what, that's the first thing that comes out. The second one that comes out, and this is where it varies from person to person. Some of them, uh, in, in the way that they, they express themselves, demonstrate kind of what you're talking about, this idea that they're able to just let it be what it is. Okay, I'm down the spiral again. I can go up whenever I'm ready. You know, No big deal. But there are others who still get hung up on being down the spiral. Despite having gone through the experience and come through the other side, they're still hung up. Oh, on I love so, it. It shows me exactly yeah. what, what's next to, to work on. You know, we're, we're yeah. works in progress until we depart physical. So yes. what's next? My father died in September. Uh, we, we travel back for the funeral. <clears throat> and Michael, my partner, is a psychologist. And he said, you know, is anything going to, you think anything's going to bubble up in this experience? I said, I don't know, but I can't wait for it to, <laughs> so I can see what it is. Not much bubbled up. One little thing did, and I kind of cleared that immediately. And now it's completely gone. I'm like, wow, I really feel like I've completely detuned my father. And I work with a lot of people in boot camp, especially everyone's detuning parents. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I know Freud went there way before me, but yes, your parents are your original transgressors. They're your original teachers. That's just natural. And everyone's detuning parents in some way. And maybe we don't fully detune parents until they cross over. Mm. Maybe not because I thought I'd fully detune my father. And sure enough, there was one little, little sticky thing that popped up. We cleared that out. And now I've, I'm so at peace with the whole thing. That's an interesting uh, idea. I had never considered that possibility. But well, that and I don't, I'm not saying that's exactly how it is, but I, I know but that it's people, it, for, it, yeah. people for whom the parents have crossed over, the detuning is so much easier <laughs> than yeah. when they're still, you know, down the street. I, we call those playfully, we call those active transgressors. I know it sounds like an active shooter, but <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're active transgressors <laughs> in your life. <laughs> yeah. active well, maybe it's, right. um, maybe it's, um, until like until the moment that they depart that some of that stuff is stuck in shadow like in the basement the deep dark basement you didn't even see that it was there or wasn't bugging you or whatever but now they're gone and so a lot of people experience when their parents leave or when somebody dies this like feeling of loss that they can't do or say or whatever so maybe that's a part of it too is that it's final like it, the they're gone the relationship is now over if you will in this physical way. So more is able to come back up. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sort of like until that actually happens, you don't know what might be residing down there. But once you've yeah. dealt with that stuff, there's nothing new that's going to be created because their ego yeah. has been released. They are pure positive source energy now. Mm -hmm. And I did that with my mother a long time ago because I was not in her life. The last 20 years of her life, she did not, she disowned me. Mm -hmm. And so I did the detuning with her early and then I went on to detune my father and all of that was freed up. So very at peace with my mother. I've had her come in dream state and, and know how much I just fully appreciate, <clears throat> appreciate her as she is now. Mm -hmm. My father, I wasn't so sure because he was still alive. Uh, you know, I went to visit him a couple of times uh, over the past couple of years and he was definitely declining. I had no, there was no moment with my father where I had the heart to heart. Oh my gosh, let's heal all our wounds. I knew that was not, it was useless with him. We were just two different people, very different vibrations. And I got to a place where I just didn't need that from him anymore. Mm -hmm. I let him be him. You know, even when Michael and I went and knocked on the door two years ago and he's like, oh, did we remember to put a picture of David up? <laughs> oh, I just love that with a sense of humor. And then he's talking about, you know, he always had a problem with weight gain. I put on weight during COVID and he was talking about, oh, he's gained weight again. And that's just who my dad is. He's obsessed with being thin and two of his three children are not. So, oh, well, <laughs> and you know, he just, there was just things like that. And I was very at peace with that. There was nothing triggering there at all. The only thing that I was triggered by was that when he died, he didn't bother leaving anything to his two sons. And um, I don't mean I didn't need his money or, you know, that's my stepmother's, you know, to live on and all that stuff. I just meant, you know, something special that he wanted his older son or his, his middle son to have, you know, his, his daughter is my, my half sister. Uh, and he just didn't. And I, that bothered me for a second. I'm like, wow, he didn't even care enough to try to like leave us something to remember him by. And it bothered me for a second. And then I said, whoop, there's the thing. Mm. there's what's in the basement because I felt a little, little trip, not too far down the spiral, but just a little, you know, a little dip. There it is. Why do I need this man to leave me anything? He, he, he delivered me into physical 
He played his role. Right. That's all he owes me. The stream has said that over and over again. Your parents owe you nothing more than your your trip into physical. Everything else is your duality from there on out or your contrast for the uh, Abraham folks. Um, and that's what he did. And so I detuned that. And then my stepmother, after I detuned that, she said, did you want anything of his? <laughs> I said, well, he had this really cool Omega watch when I was a kid. And you know, if you want to give that to, I'll take his Omega watch. And, um, uh, and I never thought about it again. And the other day she mentioned it and I'm like, I'll just send it whenever or don't, and I'll get it the next time I'm there. You know, it doesn't matter. It's so detuned now, mm. but how cool to find that one little nugget of something that was still there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I detune it and, and move on. I, I love the way you phrase that too. How cool it is to find it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I had a, I had a spin out about the book. You know, we just published the book. The official date was December 1st. And I can be very type A and very impatient. And I've definitely worked on detuning this a lot, but I return to it a lot with things. And so I've spent five years writing the book with Katarina and I have spent five years writing the book, I should say. And I was so eager to have that first review come in because she talks about in book marketing, how you need to have reviews right up front. You know, that's just so important uh, in the rankings on Amazon that you got to have all these reviews. I said, well, I'll I'll let everybody know that we published the book and the reviews are appreciated, but it's a 475 page book. So no one's going to read it, you know, overnight and and write a review. I just have to be patient. But still, I just knew that first great review was going to come in. Well, within 24 hours of the publication, the first review popped up and it was not a good review. Ah! (laughs) It was this three-star review from this person that obviously didn't even read the book because Ah. he was just saying, you know, I hate these kinds of books that are just trying to get you to take their programs and all this stuff. And I'm like, we we address that like in the introduction of the book. (laughs) And you didn't even read the damn book and you're writing a review because you were triggered by it. And then I caught myself and realized, well, I'm being triggered right now. So there it is. And there's my exercise in patience, you know, and Michael was like, you need to practice what you teach, step away and just let this, you know, he said, I hear that from him, you know, every couple of weeks. Sure. Remember to practice what you teach. He's my, yeah. he's, he's a very good accountability partner in all of this that, Hey, you know, you, you, you do this so well all the time, but every once in a while, you know, you, you step in it. And that's because I'm down the spiral when I do, I'm sitting there being impatient, needing reviews. And we know if you need something, the universe is always going to answer with more need. Yes. Here's your review. You still want reviews. (laughs) No, I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. Whatever. And then we got all these great reviews after that, which was nice, but yeah, it was really funny. It's also a reminder to be specific about what you're asking for. <laughs> That's true. I didn't just say, hey, well, you know, the, how arrogant of me to assume that all my reviews are going to be five, <laughs> gonna be five star. Right? <laughs> <laughs> how could you not love Taya? Come on. <laughs> yeah, actually, the way I look at it is if, if um, I, I haven't uh, published a book in a while, but uh, whether it be a book or something you're selling on Amazon or whatever else, when, when you're looking for the for those reviews, I actually hope for like four star. I know that sounds weird, and I don't mean a single four star. I mean a four star average. Because if I've, yeah, well, if Katarina star, says if you if you have all five star reviews, it looks inauthentic. That yes, it does. You're, and in my pot, the podcast, the book, all of that, we always get some negative reviews and people yeah. that trigger. And I'm fine with it overall, <laughs> because overall, most people are appreciating what we're doing. But it's kind right. of like your report card. You know, did I do the job that I think I did? I am trying to put something of quality and substance out there, and is it appreciated by the audience? Or is there something I, you know, I don't want to lose that part of me. I don't want to be so woo woo and out there that I don't still have that human, you know, I'm doing this to serve humanity and that's my ego mm-hmm. wanting to serve humanity. Source isn't guiding me to do that. Source is saying, you know, you, you know how to allow source in a way that a lot of people never allow. And you've taught yourself to write it and speak it. And it's something that everybody has access to, but you are unique in that way. But there is no guidance to go out and preach the gospel. Mm. There's no guidance to go out and convert people to this. It's to offer mm. it because it's being summoned by the collective asking for people of people who are studying this sort of thing. And that's what makes it flow. That's why in channeling, you know, I used to say coming on this show was fantastic because you take live questions and some of the off the wall questions that you would get yeah. were some of the best moments because you remember the thing about magnetism? 
Yes. Well, I brought that one up actually. That yeah. was yeah. That was such a cool question because yeah. I had never even thought about it before. Never thought to ask it, or or no one else did. And then the answer that came out was just like, oh my god, that's incredible. <laughs> and then more came out about it. I think I did a whole article about it after that. Mm -hmm. Like perfect mm -hmm. attraction and perfect repulsion, and you know, exact doesn't really attract exact. It's like attracts like, and there's a reason for that because if you have two exacts and you bring them together, nothing new is being created. Mm -hmm. And we see a physical example of that and how two like poles don't attract. They do the opposite of that. They repel. Right. Which is what magnetism. And you brought that out. I would have never yeah. thought probably to answer, ask that question or anything like that. The funny thing was I'd actually thought about asking that the one time I went to an Abraham conference and for whatever reason, and, and I'm certain Abraham was, was waiting for me to ask the question. The re reason I'm certain about it is it was at the very, very beginning. I had my question and Abraham was saying, if you're holding back, ask the question now. And there was silence. He said, no, no, ask the question right now. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there real quietly. There's no way I was going to ask the question, but I, I could tell they were talking to me saying like, ask the damn question. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't sure why I held back then, but I realized it, Later on, I think it's because I wanted to ask the stream. I want to ask the David flavor rather than the Esther flavor. Because mm -hmm. I asked you after I had that experience. And I loved the way that the stream expressed it. I mean, you, you just described it really, really nicely. Because it was confusing to me. How is it that, you know, if you have two magnets and you have the, you know, the two north poles of the magnets and you point them at each other, they push up. They don't, they don't come together. They push apart. How is that? Where's like attracts like and all that? I didn't understand it. But Yeah, like, like said, and exact are different things. I do see a question from Janet about... Um, Oh yeah, let's bring that in. If we're triggered, uh, if you're triggered by something, I'm doing my job. Thank you. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, how to detune? So the how to detune is we detune uh, by appreciating. Source is, is pure appreciation of all things. And so when you view any topic through the eyes of source, and you have that in you, we all come equipped that way. We're all beings of source. In pure appreciation. And it is putting the cart before the horse. We know in law of attraction, we do that all the time, right? We put the cart before the horse. We be the thing that we want to, to be, and, and then it becomes reality for us. Mm -hmm. So we do the same thing. We, we appreciate something, even if we have no idea how in the world we could ever appreciate it. Because when I talk about that, inevitably someone's going to say, well, I could never appreciate X, Y, Z. How, can, how in the hell can you appreciate that? Right, right. Well, don't start with the worst of the worst. You work your way toward it. And you start with a practice of active appreciation and you don't have to be triggered to know what your transgressors are. Your life's transgressors are the things that have shaped your belief system. And if you think about your limiting beliefs, think about the origin of your limiting beliefs. If you grew up poor and you still struggle with money, go back to the root of that. That's a big thing that we do in boot camp. Go to the root of, you know, I still struggle with money to this day because I was fed a constant diet of money is hard to come by. Money is the root of all evil. Anyone that has money is cheating and, and lying to get it. And, you know, the world is so messed up that we're in this commerce system and everything should be free, but we're not in that system. So what do you do? You appreciate the system that you're in. The people at the top of the wealth pyramid love the system that we're in mm -hmm. and the people suffering at the bottom that are all complaining about it. They're propping up the top. And I see people on social media all the time because I'm on TikTok a lot. Uh, eat the rich, eat mm. the rich. Well, that mindset is never going to propel you up that pyramid. You know, you're down there you complaining the yeah. and you're, you're creating the base of that pyramid. And until right. you learn to love the system, and that doesn't mean that we can't change the system. Yes. But you're never going to change it by demonizing it because that which right. we demonize, we give life to. And there's evidence of that everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'm personally involved in, in a project I've been trying to work on for the last two and a half years, trying to make progress on. And, and I'm still I'm I've got some detuning to do because there are aspects of it that don't work out the way I want them to. But exactly to that point, I'm, I'm trying to do something that will help not by itself, but help to make that shift in that system. Not because I hate the system, but because I want to see it change for the better. It's a big deal. I have a question about trust. Question we have a lot of trust. questions about trust, but I love yours. Yeah. Go ahead and tell it. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Is it, um, okay, there's multiple questions here. How, question mark, just wide open, how, and is it 
is it just appreciating the moments when you're in the downward spiral of like judgment or need or fear um, or those things in that ego side of things? And that will naturally shift you over to the higher mind or the source mind, as you had called it. Like how, how do you walk that journey of trust? I love that you said walk the journey because it is that. That's why I created a practice. Uh, you know, you practice yoga and you, you know, certainly the first time you go to yoga, <laughs> yeah, I used to go to yoga all the time. And the first time you go to yoga, you're terrible at it. And then if you keep doing it and you keep practicing, you get better and better and better. And if you have a great coach, you know, they can help you get better at it. So it's practice. Taya is a practice. That's why when I start talking about this stuff and someone hears appreciate all things, well, God, you can't appreciate what's going on in the Middle East right now. And you can't appreciate homelessness and poverty. You can, but don't start. That's your ego trying to quote unquote, protect you from growth by saying, well, you can't you know, you can't possibly do this. Don't start there. Start with smaller things and start a, a practice of appreciation and gratitude and detuning. And then the more you practice, the more is revealed to you. And every time I've thought I've hit the ceiling of enlightenment, and I've done that a few times in my life, wow, I really get it all now. As soon as I think that, I'm going to create something that's going to completely shatter that, send me down my spiral, <laughs> and completely unravel everything because I realize, oh, wait, I'm still human. I'm still physical. No human is perfect. I don't believe in gurus. I think that's all bullshit. I am going to be knocked back down to reality by polarity. We're in this wonderful environment that's going to always keep us moving. So the goal of Taya is not to be up the spiral at the top in abundance and joy and source energy all the time. But if you've ever looked at a chart of the financial market, especially like the U.S. stock market, you'll see that it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. But over time, it always expands and goes up generally. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always going up, even though it's going up and down. Well, that's a sign of how energy actually flows in, in the universe, but certainly how we measure it in our world, because we measure that so closely, our lives can be that as well. So we're going up, we're going down, we're having spin outs, things work, things don't. But when you return to trust and you solve the problem and you move through the experience and realize, well, the only reason that was a bad experience is because this matrix that I live in has taught me to judge it as such. Mm -hmm. If I just had major surgery, uh, on October 11th, I had a seven hour surgical procedure on my back, spinal fusion, long recovery. I'm still in recovery from it. And I started, you know, I geek out on things. So I will go on YouTube. And I want to hear people that it's called the P lif, P L I F. And I had this surgery and most of the stuff on YouTube was like, oh, it's terrible. It's awful. It's the worst experience ever. And I just stopped. I'm like, no, I don't need to see this. You know, I'm committing to have this surgery. It's like two or three hundred thousand dollar procedure is a big deal. I'm not going to I'm not going to give any of that power. And so sure enough, I manifested an amazing surgeon. I had an amazing experience going into surgery. I've never had surgery before. I've never stayed in the hospital before. I got wheeled into that room, which could be very scary. This weird apparatus that they were going to turn me upside down in and you know, all of this stuff. And I was just like, hey, here we go. This is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. I get out of surgery. And uh, I ended up uh, going to this, uh, this this luxury recovery center that I had pre-planned. And it was like staying in a five-star hotel. <laughs> and I had, you know, even though I had experiences like having a catheter and things like that, that I knew mm -hmm. there aren't, you know, oh my gosh, this is fun. I looked at it as, hey, now I know what that's like. My father used to complain about that because he was hospitalized a lot. It wasn't the end of the world. I know what it's like. Am I looking to have it again? No, but mm. <laughs> I know what it's like. It's an experience. And for me, I don't, I'm not going to come out of it and say it was terrible. It was awful. It was the worst thing ever. It was a really cool experience. I now know what it's like to stay in the hospital. I now know what it's like to have surgery. I now know what it's like to, you know, have all of this nerve stuff going on in my body as a result of my spine being manipulated. You know, I know what it's like to have to sleep in a, you know, power reclining chair because I can't sleep anywhere else and to have to use a walker and not be able to bend over. You know, all these experiences, I now know what it's like. I've expanded my consciousness and the having of experiences. And if I'm not judging it as bad, it's not bad. Right. It's just a set of experiences. All of life can be that. Mm -hmm. including losing your home, inc including a lot of things. And I know people want to, you know, rush to, well, what if someone you know, close to you dies or something like that. I always share everything as I experience it. If you listen to the stream of David podcast, if I have a spin out in some way or something happens, I'm going to be the first to come on and say, Hey, this is what happened. 
my house burned down, my partner left, my this happened, my that happened, whatever it is that's going on, I'm always going to share it. And if I go down the spiral, I'm going to tell you I went down the spiral, but I'm going to tell you what I did with it after that. Because I do think all of humanity can eventually move toward operating like that. And we will be a very sophisticated species when we do that. Mm -hmm. Which is a very oh. interesting contrast to what is often touted as the ideal. Many people will tout the ideal of, you know, it's got to be world peace. Oh, it's yeah. Be everybody, everybody. A lot of spirituality is, like, is all about that, right? Oh, we're going to yeah. new earth, right. new earth, and we're all going to agree exactly. all the time, which yeah. means we're all going to be the same vibration all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I say bullshit makes the world go around. That sounds like more bullshit to me. I don't, I don't think that that's going to happen. <laughs> You know, we're <laughs> ego driven beings. We have different desires and, and being ego driven, we want to survive. And sometimes surviving means you got to step on somebody else, mm. whether you mean to or not, you just do. Mm -hmm. Or you, you've you got to get in line. The shit. I mean, that's just also part of it. I mean, the shit's on the ground that you're going to step. Yeah. On I mean, the reality is, is that there's somebody else out there right now, you know, promoting exactly what I'm promoting and someone's going to choose their stuff and someone's going to choose mine. I'm not actively stepping on them, but I'm, I'm my, my ego wants to build a better mousetrap for sure. Yeah. I want to serve the audience in a better way than has been done, but, or why do it? Right. Mm -hmm. It's all been done before. So if I, if I don't think I'm doing it better, which is my ego, then why would I bother to do it at all? It's part We're of that. All like that. It's part of that experience. It's why we have that duality to come into. So we can experience exactly. that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, am I actively going to try to sabotage some? Of course not. That's low vibe crap. I don't need to do that. That's not trusting my abundance. I don't need to sabotage anyone. But, it, you know, when I got into the spiritual business, I'm going off on a tangent again. I was amazed at how much low vibe, nasty corporate stuff exists in this industry. That's why we publish our it's own true. books. I don't want any part of other spiritual publishing companies. <laughs> <laughs> Companies Even the that shall not all be named. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you get on the inside, you're like, okay, this is just like the furniture business that I was in for 25 years. There's no different. It just has a different facade, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mentioned that because uh, it occurs to me that for me, the ideal isn't whether or not we're all thinking the same or, or we're all enlightened or whatever. It's how many people have acquired what we call here the tire tools. Now, and, and, and are putting them to use in their life. To me, that's exciting because it yeah, doesn't really yeah. matter what where they are, up, down, whatever. They know how to well, get that, where they yeah, want to go. Again, there's a satisfaction in knowing that what you've devoted your life to is helping people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, that's well, what, like you said, that's why the ego wants to do these things. We, we want well, to and help. you know, the people that are celebrated as the most successful among us often, at least they started that way by solving a big problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, Jeff Bezos solved a big problem in my life. I never want to leave the house shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was looking at at my own purchases through Amazon. I was saying, wow, I've really become dependent upon this this sucker. It's oh, just I, I I don't know if there's a way to see how much you spend in a year on Amazon. I would be terrified to see how much. <laughs> the bad thing is, is that you know you you dream. You know, oh, I need this. Boom, I've ordered it now. Where. You know, yeah. in the past, if I really have to drive to a store and buy, right. I'll probably talk myself out of most things, right? Mm -hmm. Except the bare necessities. Now it's like, like today I decided I needed a, a popover pan for Christmas. Uh, okay. <laughs> because I'll make popovers <laughs> once in my life, probably. I don't even know what a popover is. <laughs> oh, Google a popover there. I have made them before, but I've made them in muffin pans, but it's like a little, uh, it's a batter that you put in a really hot oven in some sort of fat. And it puffs up into this big puffy um, bread-like thing, and it's kind of yeah. hollow. Uh, but it's it's they're really kind of like a pastry without the sugar. Think of it. That yeah, way. yeah. You probably could put sugar in, I guess. I don't know if it reacts. Yeah, you could. But it's a savory. Yeah. It's a savory thing. It's kind of like a roll that you would have uh, with dinner, but it's it's mostly air. So I convince myself it's not as <laughs> calorie. <-based. laughs> I'm googling sure it is. later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that. We've covered everything from, you know, dealing with the father's death to, you know, okay, what are we going to do for a pastry today? Or is it going to be a popover? Yeah. I mean, just cover the realm. I love it. Um, so, well, we're almost done with our hour here. Uh, once again, congratulations on getting the book out. I, mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is kind of like the obvious question. So, you know, forgive me for asking the obvious one. You've, you've been working on this for five years. What's next? <laughs> uh, well, what's next is I, I will write, uh, there's a couple of more books 
in, that I'm kind of starting to work on just different things. I will never write anything like this again, this, this thick and this big and all inclusive. This is, again, it's the Taya Bible. I intend to spend the rest of my life promoting this. Uh, okay. We are going to do a workbook companion to this ah, so that okay. you can read the book. And then uh, I, I always, I do recommend now uh, to do the paperback version because it, it will be like a workbook for you that you'll want to, you know, tab and go back to mm -hmm. again and again and again, because mm -hmm. there's just so much in here. Right. Uh, but we are going to do an actual workbook version. And then I've already started writing a streamism tie a book where it has all the streams, little sayings. Uh, if you ever read back in the nineties, there was something called life's little instruction book. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And it was these little musings and you could open it to any page and just read right. and just get a dose of those musings. Well, I'm doing the stream version of that. So oh, all of the okay. stream musings I'm putting together in a small little, you know, bathroom book, if you will, that you can just pull, pull open to any, you know, any page and kind of get a little dose of stream. So those are things I'm working on. So is, is the workbook, like, is it divided up into modules like the boot camp is, or, or is it just divided? Yeah. Up and, and my partner, Michael, who has been a professor at the college level and he's a psychologist, he's actually going to be heavily involved in the workbook part of this. Oh, okay. Cool. So, uh, we, we will do that. I still have the stream of David podcast, which, uh, we were coming off of hiatus post-surgery. Uh, we put our first episode out this week with Matt, you know, Matt, Fantastic. I, know uh, Matt, and I still have yeah. the tire practice podcast, which I will resume uh, within a couple of months, probably. Uh, and then we will do seminars and workshops and lives and all that stuff. We'll start that up again. And Very your cool. publishing company. And the publishing company, which will publish yeah. all of that stuff and we'll publish other things too. Um, you know, but we really need to. We need to, to kind of cut our teeth on our own stuff before we start trying to publish other people's stuff, but we want to get there for sure. But, but I'm curious to know what that's going to be. I mean, obviously yeah. we have to kind of wait and see, but I'm wondering who, who are they going to bring on board to, to publish? That's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Well, we've had other people come through the Taya world that want to do things that are not exactly Taya, but are sort of Taya related or centric mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that we would love to help publish. You know, why not pool our knowledge and stay out of that mainstream publishing world where they take your work and completely change it? which is what I didn't want to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things, the reason I decided to self-publish the first book is Katerina, uh, one of her favorite books was Conversations with God. But she says, you know, that was a whole different book originally and that it got oh, published yeah, right. from a mainstream publisher and right. really reworked, you know, to be what it is now, which made it a huge success, mm -hmm. but also changed the core message. And I didn't want the, I would rather, I would rather reach fewer people with an authentic core message for me than have something completely glossed over and changed and, Turned into, you know, the God practice <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, the Jesus practice. It, it makes sense that it was reworked that way. I didn't know it was. Now yeah, I, I'm like, not. I, yeah. I mean, what what he did was right for him and that message. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, to this day, I'm still I'm sure is still uh, serving lots of people. I just the, the streams message, though, is not politically correct. And, and right. they've never been about that because, again, they appreciate all things. And I don't know how you would approach a mainstream publisher and say, hey, I want to publish a book that says you can appreciate anything, anything. Mm. And that really triggers people. Mm -hmm. I guess my point is, I would love to know what Neil Don Walsh's original Conversations of God was. I, I want to know what the one was that was edited out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to claim to speak. For, I, I don't know. But her, from what she said, it was more authentic channeled stuff. God wasn't part of it. Oh, really? Her. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. wow. I, 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 I want to get a think copy about how, that. Think about what a cool title that is, though. Conversation. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. God, who doesn't want to hear from God? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, like with the secret, I mean, when I heard that the original secret had Esther Hicks in it and she got edited out, I had to get a copy of it. I mean, yeah. You know that. Was, well, yeah. And the story well, yeah. was is they, they wanted <laughs> Esther to basically say, you know, everything that you do from here on out, we're going to own if you're going to be in this book. And she sort of said, well, I don't need you. <laughs> and that turned out to be true. And mm -hmm. they both turned out to be successful. Right. Yeah. You know, the secret is a, is a great uh, gateway drug to all of this. It is. You know, it doesn't go deep, but it really, it, it, it definitely grabs you and gets you thinking. And, and a lot of people will throw it down and say, this doesn't work, but others will be intrigued and then move on to other stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and as it turned out, when I finally did get my copy of the original secret and watched it, it was actually like, oh, that's all. <laughs> it yeah. was kind of a bit of a letdown. It wasn't you know, it's surface enough to, get, to kind of <laughs> it get people just enough, into yeah. it. And then you do need to go elsewhere. A lot of people, I will say a very common uh, path that I see is a lot of people will read The Secret, 
they'll be into Abraham and then they'll need something more and they find their way to what we do. Right, right. Um, the other thing that I've also found fascinating over the years is we've had more and more people coming out of the show who are channels. Um, in fact, I'm rem reminding right now what we had a, a episode one of the last times you were on, David, you and Jody Lynn were kind of doing dual channeling, which mm -hmm. was kind of fun. Right. Um, but as as I've had more and more people onto the show who are, who are very good at, at expressing what they're receiving, I'm really fascinated by the different flavors that come through, in part because of the duality of it or the contrast of it. I like the, the Abraham term in this particular case, because on the one hand, I hear the similarities and on the other hand, I hear the differences, and I know the differences are the flavors of the person who is, mm -hmm. you know, channeling the message. Being filtered through a human consciousness, so right. there's always going to be some human there. My goal has always been to take me out of it as much as possible, and to allow it to flow, and not be afraid of what's coming through. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's where people get really triggered by what we mm -hmm. share sometimes, because again, yeah. you're talking about authentic appreciation of all things. The Matrix is exactly the opposite of that, right? So it really goes against all of that. Yeah. And I, I am here though, for the people that are really far enough into their journey to where they're, they're ready to at least wrap their mind around the concept, even if you don't start there, but mm -hmm. you know, eventually I'll get to where I can appreciate everything. As soon as I read about it, I've resubscribed to the New York times. Now I read the New York times every day. Mm, cool. Cause it doesn't okay. trigger me. That's it doesn't good. trigger me. I can read about yeah. anything that's going on in the world and appreciation of exactly what is, which has been a long time to get to that place. Yeah, I'm almost there. I, I, I'm not a hundred percent there, but I'm, I'm really close. I'm like 99% of the time there. I, I have to keep my antenna up to make sure. Oh, well, I'm if it drags your vibe down, you should, I, I, I would say if you want your vibe to be high and you want to live a joyous, abundant right. life, you need to turn that stuff off for a while. Yeah, that, so And that's what I do. I take a uh, mini vacation. Yeah. Okay. I got to stay away from this room a bit. Yeah. I just have to walk away, come back a little bit later on after I got myself in a better space. But mm -hmm. yeah. It's really interesting how these tools that you you and others have taught, they're just, they're so good at helping us to maintain that perspective. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So, Joey Lynn, I got to do one more time what I always do, because you're always so good at, at tying things together, right? So, <laughs> oh God, you. you got so much material to draw on here. What, ah! what, what's your takeaway? <laughs> ah, there is many, but uh, I want to start with the the reminder from David and the book that you've written and all of the tie magic. I will call it that we're here to experience expanding consciousness. And I love, I'm going to lean on the visual that you gave us earlier because I think it's so incredible of the stock market. When you look mm -hmm. at it or your life and you're zoomed into the every day, it is up and down and it can be quite tumultuous. But when we take a step back and we zoom out and look over the whole picture, it's upward bound. And that gives us the opportunity to see that this moment might not be perfect. Nothing is perfect, but over time we can appreciate the ups and downs and see how the trajectory is positive overall. Lovely. Really good. Yeah. I love that. That's a great, great way to, to bring it all to a close. So David, once again, thank you for joining us and we're going to have you back Always in a couple weeks, here. aren't we? You're coming yeah, back I, like I think I booked two I think. Uh, for this month. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, so, so this is part one, <laughs> part two coming up in a few weeks. So stay tuned to that. And thank you all who uh, jumped in on the live stream. Thank you for the questions. That was really great. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.